Hey guys, welcome back to Live from the Nest. Very excited to have a special guest here, David Peck, longtime industry vet in the cannabis space. We're going to really dive into some of the things we're excited about, some of the things we've seen. David, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Excited. You know, um, it's interesting, right? Because this space is changing so quickly and a lot of people coming in and out of it. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you had your background at Sony uh, in the digital side, but quickly moved into high times. Tell me about how you made that transition. So I've actually always been interested in the cannabis space since I was, before I could drive. You know, I figured out there was this stuff called weed <laughs> and it sold for a lot of money and people wanted it and so I had to figure out how to get it. So as a, as a youngster, I rode my single speed bike uh, around town, figured out how to get some great weed and <laughs> sold it to my friends in high school and kind of became really interested in this industry that was still being defined and was good. It, it seemed like it was really good and healthy at its core, but yet was vilified by society. And so that really fascinated me was figuring out that dichotomy between the two things. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, uh, I absolutely agree. It's interesting because we had um, Matt Barnes in here today from the Lakers and the Warriors who's oh, starting cool. a, a THC cannabis brand. And it's really interesting because he was talking about how he felt you know, so vilified the whole time he was using it in college and in the NBA. And then the second he got out of the NBA and told people that he wanted to use it and they wanted to help be an advocate for it, everyone's kind of patting him on the back and cheering him on. And it's such an interesting change of feelings. And so talk, talk, talk to me about that point from going from Sony to high time, you know, where that transition came from and how that spurred. Sure. So, you know, like I said, I've always been involved in the cannabis industry, a little more in the shadows and High Times really gave me the opportunity to kind of come out into the open and say, hey, this is the industry I'm in and really make it my day job and instead of my night job, which yeah. was super cool and a great opportunity. And when I first got there, you know, this is a company that's world renowned. It's the, you know, the good and bad of cannabis, the consumer reports of cannabis. It's this cultural icon that had really been neglected for years because the founding families were kind of squabbling over the money and trying to, it was, it's, it was the victim of an internal power struggle, and one of my friends from LA came in and bought it from this founding family, and it was an amazing opportunity. Came to me and said, "Hey, do you want to come in and help me with this thing?" And I was like, "Absolutely! It's like, a, you know, it's, it's like a dream come true." And the interesting thing about dreams come true is it's always a positive and a negative. It's a big responsibility, and it's really cool on the one hand, but it's also a crap ton of work, and yeah. that's what I experienced from for the next three years after I said yes to that. Well, I know that High Times is a lot of things, and we touched on this a little bit before, but walk me through just what High Times does, who they are, and what that audience kind of looks like. Great question. So High Times is the oldest cannabis publication, started in 1974, and it's been going strong ever since, and maybe like 10, 15 years ago, jumped into the event space. So they have the Cannabis Cup, which I'm sure most of you guys know, but for those of you who don't, it's like the Coachella for weed. So it gives new brands the chance to expose their products to customers, and then there's musician, and, and it's also a music show. So um, I got there in 20, like I think it was March of 2017, and then April of 2017, we had our first Cannabis Cup in uh, Orange County, no, at the Nas, in San Bernardino. Yeah, San Bernardino. And we had, um, like, Wu-Tang Clan was there, 50 Cent, the game was this, like, Whoa, and it was so cool because you, I, I really felt through high times, you, you could feel it going mainstream and just kind of being at that point, in that moment right there and then was seeing all these people who'd come out, there's probably like 10,000 people there appreciating the same thing and it was like, wow. It, and it was just a moment of like, this is so cool. I'm here uh -huh. helping and watching Canvas go mainstream. And so in a lot of ways, that's what high times is. High times is the vehicle one of the main vehicles for the mainstream of cannabis by giving people better information, by destigmatizing, that's really where, you know, High Times has come a long way in terms of helping the industry. Yeah. Um, the nitty gritty, so nuts and bolts, you know, it's a $20 million a year company in terms of revenue and a good chunk of that comes from events. And then as you guys all know, you since you can't advertise on Facebook or Google, if you have a cannabis brand, High Times is one of the best outlets for advertising. Yeah. And while I was there, we acquired Green Rush Daily, which was a large site. Yeah. 
Dope Magazine and Culture Magazine that really turned us into an even bigger media powerhouse if you want to reach the customer, the High Times media group was really a good avenue for people to do that. Wow, yeah, really interesting. And I, I remember that Cannabis Cup because I believe we were working with you at the time, Hawk yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I was actually, that was right when I started. And I remember asking uh, the point of contact on the account and being like, hey, so what are we doing for them? Are we allowed to be doing this? Is it legal? So walk me through just kind of stuff that we were doing for you back then because I, I wasn't a part of it. Sure, so broad strokes it was, you know, we were, we're in a, we were an event business, so we want to sell tickets to an yeah. event. So as you guys know, a great place to do that is Facebook. But if you're a cannabis company, you're going to get banned from Facebook really quickly. So Gian, who was the point of contact, and myself figured out some workarounds on the Facebook platform nice. where we could stay, you know, on the right side of their terms and conditions and still advertise the event. And I think we... I think we sold like two hundred thousand dollars worth of tickets. We like blew yes, it out of the water. Love it. And uh, what was so cool about Hawk and the experience was, I, I think I came in uh, maybe two weeks before the event. And I was like, guys, we got to do this. <laughs> and like you guys just made it happen. It was a really amazing experience working with everyone here. Great team, and the results were also incredible. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's really helpful, and it's it's always fun to hear those types of stories. Um, you know, one of the things I want to dig in today is just, the, you know, what's happened in the industry? Where do you think it's going? What's exciting about it? But let's start with what's happened, right? You've been a part of it since, oh, since you were 15, right? On the, in one way on or another, the black yeah. side. And yeah. then, um, tell me about what you've seen change over the last three or four years since you've been at High Times. Yeah. I mean, it's just really the old ad just like never give up, never give up, never give up. I've seen a lot of people get into it and like, we all know that everyone thinks, hey, you, you grow a plant and you can make money, but it's so much more complex than that. And so I think a lot of people got in the industry who were like, oh, I just have to grow a plant, and they got washed out, they got bankrupt. So you saw a lot of people who couldn't cut it come and go. Yeah. And then you saw a lot of the OGs, these people who were like, you know, former drug dealers, former criminals, who just gr grinding it out, grinding it out, and a bunch of them made it. They partnered with people with real money, and they have real businesses now. Um, some of them didn't. Some of them couldn't handle the regulated business, so yeah. they sold whatever they had and left, or just left. And now you have a mix of, you know, OGs with other people's money and corporate guys. Yeah, and that's kind of the that's kind of the mix of who's in the industry now, in my, in my opinion. Yeah, no, it's it's very true, and we see very diverse rooms when we have cannabis and THC brands come in, right? You'll see, um, you'll see people that have been in the industry for 10 years and people that have came from banking now currently in THC. And so it's really interesting to see the way that works. You know, one of the things I'm curious to hear your perspective on is what are some of the taboos that frustrate you in the industry or some of the things that just frustrate you with cannabis in general? You know, I, I'd say nothing. Like, I love the... There's a lot of challenges, yeah. and I love the challenges, right? If there weren't challenges, I wouldn't have a job. I consider myself a, a problem solver, right? So that's why I love this industry is because the most basic things, you know, frustrations, is, you know, to your point, the most basic things, you shouldn't have a problem with. So, you know, why is it that we can't advertise on Facebook and we get banned and our accounts get shut down? Why is it that Instagram will literally delete your account. Uh, why is it that I can't use any of the normal payment processors that any other e-commerce brand can? Yeah. Um, and then if I do find payment processing, it's out of like Africa and I'm getting charged 10% and maybe I'm getting robbed. So it's just the basics of doing business that normal businesses have access to aren't available to cannabis. And I'd say that's the frustration yeah, but also the opportunity yeah it really is a, a huge opportunity but it's going to be interesting right because there's going to be so much technology that develops to solve those issues and then eventually i think we can all agree that those issues will go away right i think it'll eventually be legalized whether it's 5 10 20 years from now it'll eventually be legalized and a lot of these technologies that are developed are no longer going to be important because it's uh, obsolete at that point but what about the opposite side what do you what are your favorite parts about the industry or where do you think there's some biggest growth opportunities I love it. I mean, you know, I love, like I said, the challenges are the opportunity. So I love the fact that um, it's, you know, we're kind of all in it together. There's a community of people who are trying to solve these problems 
and you see smarter and smarter people coming into the industry who are also trying to figure it out and that's that's cool you know you, even on the distribution side like some of the people i see making software to do distribution there's a company called navis that i think is really interesting um so i think that's super cool one of the things i've loved about it is we've built a team uh high times built a team in belgrade right so you have people there who are like super interested in what we're doing really smart really intelligent and want to help us figure it out and that was a really really cool experience nice yeah and so you know you've done a few things since walk me through your your most recent venture so there's uh so there's high times and i worked there from june 2017 till just June of this year and we did at high times the big thing we did there was what's called a regulation a crowdfunding okay and that's where you it's basically an e-commerce funnel but at the end of the funnel the buyer gets shares in the company wow yeah so high times uh, created one of those uh, got it approved by the SEC and was able to raise over $15 million from 22,000 plus investors across the world. And wow. that was such an amazing experience because you had so much love for High Times from its people who'd known it for years. We had people sending in videos about why they loved High Times and that was just such a really special experience. And then since High Times, I've now moved over to a company called 710 Labs, which is a <clears throat> Which is one of the companies that's been around since the beginning. Oh, really? Yeah, the focus is um, concentrates. So okay. the guy who started, it's a guy named Brad Melshanker. He's been in the industry for quite some time. Started out here in California in about 2008. Yeah. Moved to Denver and started a dispensary called The Greenest Green. And he was just one of those guys who you love working with in the industry. He loves weed. He's in it for all the right reasons. And uh, and so he so he did Green Screen and Seven Ten Labs in Colorado, and then came here to LA and started an operation in Oakland. And he has a real estate backer mm -hmm. who's um, helped raise the money for the project and really been a great supporter of what we're doing. And Brad invited me over to help create a direct-to-consumer product. So oh, cool. what we're doing is a subscription box for our high-end consumers that lets, that lets them get the best of what we have delivered straight to their door. Wow, very cool. And that actually kind of leads directly into where I want to like finish this thing off. You know, As we zoom out from the industry and just commerce in general, right? let's say we're in 10 years from now, where do you think that the future of this industry is growing and where companies are going to win, right? I mean, we talked about this before, but do you think it's going to be, is it going to, is the future in retail, is the future in e-commerce, is the future on the brand side, is it on the cultivation side, or is it all? Where, where do you think the, the winners are going to be? Well, the great thing about the industry is that you can be a winner in any category if you're committed to being a winner in that category. Yeah. So there's going to be winners in cultivation, there's going to be winners on the brand side, there's going to be winners on the retail side. I personally think that, you know, there's going to be niche brands for everybody yep. and people are going to like different things. The, the niche brands may be owned by the same parent company that's had the money to yeah. sort of market them and tell a brand story about them. But um, I think the cool thing about it is it's like quality is what's going to matter, right? Now people kind of don't know and they're learning, but over time the quality of the brand is is going to be what matters, not just the packaging. Yeah. One of the things I think it's going to be interesting is to see, you know, where retail goes. Right now, it's basically only retail and delivery, right? You can't go into a grocery store yet. I'm interested to see if it's going to, if it's going to stay that way or if it's going to do what liquor did, where there's going to be dispensaries, but they're also going to be able to buy cannabis in a grocery store. What do you think about that? I think it's going to be state by state. I think there's going to be some states where you can buy it, you know, where it's more controlled than others, and I think you'll just see that whole range of options. Like there'll be some supermarkets that'll be selling in some states, and I think there'll be only medical places that are selling in other states. Yeah, I think that's that's obviously going to be it, right? Now that, now that you think about it in, in that light, very similar to how you can buy you know, liquor at a grocery store in Las Vegas, but then you can't get a beer past 9 p.m., I believe, in Utah. <laughs> and so it changes changes state by state. Yeah, and, and Utah's interesting because they're... Also, like, they're involved in the cannabis business. Like, some of the companies that make a lot of the, like, 
you talk about picks and shovels being a really important part of the industry. So the freezers we use to do our like water hatch, the like um, those are made in Utah. So the LDS community is definitely profiting from the cannabis industry. Wow, interesting. I, didn't, I had no idea. What do you think about, in terms of product SKUs, do you think there's going to be a product type that really rises above the rest? Because obviously you know there's, there's pre-rolls, there's flour, there's dabs and concentrates, there's obviously edibles, and there's a lot of different ways to consume. Do you think that there's going to be a specific type of product that rises above? Well, I mean, let's just, you know, you and I were talking earlier about, you know, I asked what you smoke, and we sort of talked, we sort of had that casual conversation about, you know, just our personal preferences, and I think that really... You know, I think everybody's gonna have their own preference, and so some people are gonna want pre roll, some people are gonna want flour, yeah, and some people might want a few of those things. Yeah, absolutely. But do you think that? I mean, obviously, there's kind of like there's people that when they first get in, right, they're probably gonna have to go aim towards vapes and edibles, mm -hmm. and then the people that have been in, you know, they grow, they go into the flour, and then stronger vapes and concentrates. I think that there's a huge industry and in probably why you see so many different edible companies popping up because you get that first time user and you get that person that's not necessarily comfortable smoking, um, trying something. And I just wondered what your, what your opinion was about how that'll. Well, I, I, I think the reason you see so many edible companies popping up is because it's much easier to do because the, they just have to make the edible. They don't have to get, they, they're buying the active ingredient from someone else. Yeah. So you see a lot of these companies and you know, God bless them. They they can just focus on the brand. They can just focus on the packaging. They don't have to be vertically integrated. They just get the distillate from someone, add it to their stuff, and they're good to go. Hmm. Um, I guess I'm personally like edibles sort of still kind of scare me because you never know about like the dosage. And even if they tell you the dosage, you don't know when it's going to hit you. Yeah. So I'm not an edible person, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of progress made in edibles and also pills. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a company called Level out there that's making... Um, is making THC pills and they're trying to focus them on hangover cures and wow. so I think you're just going to see a lot more focus and people getting more specific. Yeah, there's going to be so many product uses, right? Like I, I was just at an event for CBD and cannabis yesterday <clears throat> and there's, you know, there's skincare, there's sleep, there's appetite, there's uh, mood. So there's so many applications. It's going to be really interesting. And then also, you know, one of the things that we open up and, and discuss is, you know, other parts of the cannabinoid, uh, right? So you're like, you're looking at the CBG, you're looking at, you know, different terpenes, you're looking at all these different things. Have you spent any time like thinking about or looking into those other applications? So what's really interesting to me is how the educational system will sort of will adapt to this because that's really where what you're talking about will come from is that there becomes money for research, right? Because I think now it's so, it, it seems to me like it's still people trying to prove something as opposed to as much real science as I would like to see. So yeah. I think over time, you're going to see more money put towards that and that's going to be really exciting. No, absolutely. And so a lot of that's done up the street, right? At UCLA, it seems like Dr. Chen over there is doing a ton of interesting things. And it's interesting because you'll, you'll notice brands anchoring themselves to researchers. So it's, I'm really excited and anxious, I guess, for uh, continued research to happen and for some of those studies to get finalized because it just seems like for so long a lot of those studies have been in progress mm -hmm. and so once those are able to be published and approved to be spoken about that's when the industry is going to be able to take on a lot of the validity exactly i agree um what are the some of, some of the things that you're excited to see i know it's you know slow coming um and you've mentioned you know some of the solutions on the banking side but what are some of the things on the product side that you're excited to everything um you know, I love, like 710, we make an amazing pre-roll that I'm a huge fan of. We're the only company that has, that I know that has like a hand-rolled pre-roll. Oh, cool. And uh, I, sh I should have brought them in here. Yeah. I think I, I, think <laughs> I have one in my car. I can yeah. give you later. But um, just there's going to be more good products yeah. and more things to try. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely it. And I think that's going to be really interesting because it's going to be tough to get an adopted, uh, a really committed user, right? Because for the next, for, for many years, even the people that are daily users are going to be wanting to try different things because there's so many new brands, there's so many new products to use, there's so many ways to try this this thing, right? That it's going to be uh, really interesting to see how the brands that, level up and really take on the user are going to be able to keep that adopted user. Yep. And, and I think, like I said, that's all about quality. Like if you, 
if you give people good experience every time, they'll stay with you. Yep. Well, that's it, man. I appreciate you coming in. No problem. It's, it's always fun spending time. Excited to give this uh, give this a try. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>